Hey, hey, this is meteorologist Darren Hart from ILSnow.com, September 4th, 2016, calling this video to order at 12.50 p.m. So I'm going to show you what's going to happen here through September. And you can see it warming up here pretty significantly by Wednesday, the 7th, and by Thursday. Very warm across the northeastern United States. And if you take a look at the GFS, they're predicting highs in the middle 80s uh, on the 7th and 8th, which is a good 15 degrees above normal. Uh, the saving grace is that we won't have the oppressive humidity that we had in August, which was just uh, pretty awful. So anyway, going back to the GFS here, it shows uh, staying pretty warm. And then by about the 11th or 12th, there is a cold shot that kind of blunts the heat. But it lifts up and goes away, you start warming up a little bit again, then the next cold shot comes right down into the middle United States, and that's where the brunt of it stays, in the middle of the United States. We get a little bit of it here mid-month, but then it lifts away, and it looks like it's going to get warm again by the 18th, 19th, with another cold shot coming down into the central United States. And I think there's a reason for that. And if you look at the Palmer Drought Index, you can see that we've had the drought in the eastern United States all summer and even more severe out west. So you have drought and hot in the west, you know, warm and dry in the east. You have the warm uh, sea surface temperatures, uh, which I think I can show you right here. Yes, you can see the warm water off the eastern United States. So that kind of uh, develops into like a warm dome for the eastern United States where it manipulates a jet stream in a way where it drops into the central United States and then comes back up around the heat dome. And um, what that does, it forces the cold air to come down into the United States in between the two places where it's hot and dry, where it's been relatively wet this summer in the central United States. And uh, going back to that, I mean, look where you can see where that cold air is, right in the middle of the country. And I think one effect that it'll have is that we might see some pretty impressive uh, cold shots, at least on the models, 7 to 10 days away. But then as they get closer in time, they tend to fizzle out on the models. And then by the time they get here, they're weaker than what they were depicted, and they also leave quicker. And that in and of itself is not a bad thing for September. We'll have some warm days and, and, and coolish nights, but... We're going to have to find a way to kick that before this winter, or else that could become a real problem. Um, what about El Nino? Well, here's what we had last winter, the very strong El Nino, and it collapsed this spring, and now it's gone, and it's replaced with a, a La Nina, which you can see clearly on the, uh, on the sea surface temperature map here with the cold water along the equator. And the interesting thing is it's sandwiched by a large expanse of warm water, so I think that's going to keep the La Nina fairly weak. I don't think there's going to be a big, huge, cold pool of water in the Pacific that just grows to some big, huge expanse. So I think it'll be a weak La Nina this winter. And interesting enough, you can see the warm PDO in the North Pacific, which has been there for a few years now. Normally that gives us... Uh, uh, cooler air in the eastern United States and when you combine that with the Siberian snow cover, that usually gives us a cold winter, although it did not give us a cold winter last year because the El Nino overwhelmed everything and just screwed everything up. And one lesson I learned is that when you just have a very strong El Nino, just, just bet the farm on a warm, mild, useless winter for us because that's usually what happens. And you can see here that they're spaced about 15 to 18 years apart. So the next time this comes around, I'll either be, you know, dead or just too old to care about it. But, you know, if I'm still in this biz by then, I'll, I'll bet the farm on, on a warm winter the next time we see a very strong El Nino. Um, next thing I want to do is look at some of the analog years. I'm going to ignore the strong El, uh, La Ninos and moderate La Ninos because I don't think we're going to have one this year. And you can see that the models uh, definitely cluster toward a weak La Nina. So that's what I'm going to be looking at. And I know a lot of forecasters are enamored with the analog forecasting method, comparing 
uh, factors, you know, possible factors this year to how it happened in years past. And I think it does have some use, but at the same time, I think it does have, have its limitations and it, it kind of makes us berry pick. You know, if you're biased toward wanting a cold winter, you know, we'll find the factors that gave us a cold winter and kind of ignore the rest. So what I want to do is just do a straight up uh, look at this for, for weak La Nina's. Uh, 95, 96, uh, it's bordering toward a moderate uh, La Nina, but I threw it in there anyway. That was a very strong winner. Uh, 96, 97 was even better for Indian Lake. That was a very good winner, and that was a weak La Nina. Uh, 2000, 2001, that was a solid winner. 05, 06, uh, that was kind of weak. 08, 09 was a good winner. 11, 12 was the gold standard for crappy winners before we had this one. And 13, 14, that started a bit rocky, a little bit up and down, but then it became uh, very cold, and we had a very uh, cold, uh, record cold March. So, summing it all up, it, having a weak La Nina tends to favor a good winner for us, but it's not guaranteed, and you have to look at a lot of other factors. And we're just going to have to see how the hemispheric patterns play out as we go into the fall. Uh, one more panel I want to leave you with here is the uh, CF forecast climate model, and it's showing uh, warmer than normal weather this winter, December, January, February for Alaska, which might be a consequence of the warm PDO, and pretty expansive area of cold weather in eastern Canada. And I don't want to put too much stock into it. It's a climate forecast model from, you know, that's supposed to verify several months out. It was initialized in August. So, you know, you got to take it with a grain of salt. But in theory, if you have a lot of cold air banked up in Canada and a decent amount of warm air in the south, you get in this area here, and this is the battleground that could develop uh, some pretty decent snowstorms. But, you know, I don't want to just say it's going to be all good. There could be ice storms as well or mixed precipitation events. But this could end up being an active winter, and we're just going to have to see how the cards uh, <laughs> fall down on the table and see how this winter turns out. So, um, hey, we're getting close to the winter. we got uh, several shows coming up. Uh, Snow Bash, September 17th and 18th. Eastern Grass Drag Nationals, September 24th, 25th. Uh, Big East Power Sports Show, September 30th through the October 2nd. And the 40th annual Snow Dio in Old Forge, December 9th and 11th. I hope we have some snow for that this year because having no snow for Snow Dio and Christmas last year was very depressing. And uh, I'll see you next time at the Isle Snowstorm Center.